Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin, and we're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. I just want to say, if you don't already subscribe to the Impact Lounge, please hit that subscribe button. We are the number one source for Impact Wrestling news and podcasts. I wanted to jump on today just for a little bit, um, for a short podcast. I wanted to discuss a few things. Uh, first thing is, just in case you're not, you're, you haven't already heard, and, and if you haven't heard, I, I apologize. Apologize for the quote unquote spoiler, uh, but Brian Cage officially now in AEW. Uh, he signed with AEW, uh, now the number one contender. Or right off the bat, he's getting a shot at, at John Moxley. Uh, made his the, the debut at Double or Nothing. And, uh, but I was thinking, what does this mean for Impact Wrestling? Now that Brian Cage is officially gone, he's not coming back to, to uh, Impact Wrestling. What does it mean? What does it mean for Impact Wrestling? Uh, well, let's think. Uh, a- AEW can't sign everybody. I know. I know when people are released from the WWE, or if they're in Impact Wrestling, the the most the popular thing to say on the internet is, "Oh, they're going to AEW." But I don't care who Tony Khan is; he doesn't have enough money to sign everybody. And I know the Revival wants to go there, so he's gonna have to shell out some money for the Revival uh, or the Revolt or whatever they're calling themselves now. Uh, but but bottom line, they can't sign everybody. They can't sign everybody, and I think with with Brian Cage signing with AEW and with the revival slash the revolts, whatever they're going by, um, foregone to conclusion that that Tony Khan's gonna have to shell out some money as well to sign them, and that's two people he's gonna have to shell out money for. I think now is a I think this gives Impact a tremendous opportunity now to bring back. EC3. You know, I know, I know it was, oh, EC3 is going to go to AEW, but like I said, can't sign everybody. So I think, I think now Impact needs to jump on this. And when that 90 day uh, non compete clause is, is over, I think Impact Wrestling should make a major play for, for uh, EC3. I think EC3 would, would, would uh, fill the gap left by Brian Cage uh, by bringing in a top star immediately. And I don't know if you've been following EC3 on Twitter. He's um, he's changed his character. He's got a new character now. And his his Twitter videos or the, or the social media videos, they're absolutely fantastic. It's a new EC3. And I would love to see this character in Impact Wrestling. And I think now... Again, with Brian Cage, uh, with the Re- Revival most definitely going there. I think it's time for EC3 to come home. I think it's time for EC3 to come home to Impact Wrestling. Even Moose said that he would love to see EC3 back in in Impact Wrestling. And, uh, you know, I'm sure everybody listening right now would, would feel the same way. Again, EC3, man, it's time to come home. Scott Demore, Don Callis, they should be... Now that Brian Cage is gone, because I'm sure they were trying to bring him back, but now that Brian Cage is gone, they should be thinking of putting together a tremendous offer to EC3. Bring him home, man. I mean, I hear there's so much possibilities there. I mean, bring the new character in. Give him the freedom that he wants. Let him do what he wants. Uh, let him be the character he wants to be. Let him have creative control. Whatever. Whatever. Just think EC3 against Moose. EC3 against Michael Elgin. EC3 against Tessa Blanchard, for goodness sake. It just would be fantastic, man. I mean, he was in the WWE. And they they had no idea what to do with, with EC3. No idea what to do with EC3. He was a much bigger, much bigger star in in TNA Impact than he than he was in uh, the WWE. They didn't know how to use him, and and it's quite apparent that uh, he, that the character that we're seeing now that uh, he's bringing to the forefront on social media is most likely the character that he wanted to portray in WWE, but they didn't give him the freedom. So as I mentioned, creative creative control, give him the creative control, Impact Wrestling. Let, show, show the WWE that they made a huge, huge mistake by, by letting him go, by not making him the star that he could have been. Bring him home, man. Come on, Scott Demore. Don Calves, you know, everyone listening right now, everyone that's listening right now, we should start a campaign on social media. We should start a bring back EC3 to Impact Wrestling campaign on social media. Let's do it, man. Let's let's start that campaign. 
Let's get it done, man. Let's 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 get uh, let's get EC3 back back uh, in Impact Wrestling. All right, so let's uh, let's move on. Um, there are a few wrestlers right now in Impact Wrestling that I think uh, that I think not that I think that I know deserve a a a push a singles push right now. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna name the three. I'm gonna name the three that I I think uh, deserve and should get. A singles push, and the first name on that list is Rohit Raju. Now, if you've been listening to my podcast, you'll be knowing that I've been saying it a lot. That Rohit Raju, tremendous talent, uh, glad he's on his own right now. Cuts a tremendous promo, and if anyone deserves a singles push, it's Rohit Raju. He's been busting his ass. Uh, in the Desi Hit Squad uh, for quite some time now, for a couple of years, and now he's known as the Desi Hit Man. And he went into that um, number one contenders tournament. He cut a tremendous promo, and I really hope Don Callis. Well, I know Don Callis was listening, cause, but he kind of knocked it. Uh, but Scott Demore, uh, everyone at uh, at Impact Wrestling, they they should have been watching that that promo because. Rohit Raju slash Hakeem Zayn, as he's known on the in- independent scene, cuts an absolute tremendous, tremendous promo. A believable promo, and it comes from the heart, man. And for them to have him lose to Trey Miguel, who has already had an opportunity for the X Division, has already oppor- had an opportunity to, uh, for a singles run, in my opinion, because he challenged for the X Division title. For him to beat Rohit Raju after that promo, and after that, um, that after they um, teased that little push, I thought that was ridiculous. No way Rohit Raju should have lost that match to Trey Miguel, in my opinion. Anyway, no way. I mean, I'm just thinking about just think about the promos he would have cut on Michael Elgin. Just think of the promos he would have cut cut on Michael Elgin. Holy smoke, man! He would have just absolutely verbally smoked. Michael Elgin with those promos and it really would have pulled the, the the fan in and it would have give given anyone that's watching it would have given that fan just immediate interest in the match uh, against Michael Elgin he of course he would have lost to Michael Elgin that's expected but he should have beaten Trey Miguel because I don't think Trey Miguel has cut one promo outside of doing the uh, that 70s show um, knockoff clip where they're around the table smoking pot. I, I, I just, there's no way, Rohit Raju is, I think is a better talent than Trey Miguel. That's my opinion. And I don't know, again, going back to Scott Demore, Don Callis, are you watching the indie scene at all? Are you watching Hakeem Zayn killing it at AAW and Glory Pro? Isn't that the type of guy that you want? In your promotion to to work at you know the the their the fullest abilities, it's like you it feels like you're holding it back. and and Don Callis knocking Rohit Raju's promo in one of his promo lines on um, on the the aftershock show I think was just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous! He knocked. Um, my mother calls me son because I shine like one. He knocked. He knocked that line, and I know I, I talked about it uh, on a prior episode. But that was stupid. I'm sorry. That was dumb. This is a guy that could be um, an X division champion and can challenge for the world heavyweight championship if he's given the opportunity. And that's just it. He's got to be given the opportunity. And. And it's just having him lose to Trey Miguel was a mistake, man. But they gotta push him. They have they have a a he's a um, he's a diamond. He's a when it, in terms of talent, a professional wrestling talent, he's a diamond. Okay, but they're kind of treating him like a lump of coal right now. But but he's he's a he's a definitely um, extremely talented, and they need to give him a major push, a major push. I mean, they're having right now. Chris Bay is is challenging for the uh, is in an X Division um, program right now with uh, with Willie Mack, and Chris Bay just started. Now, nothing against Chris Bay, they're very talented, but. Rohit Raju has been there for a couple of years, and he deserved a, he deserves that opportunity for the X Division title. Um, not Chris Bay at this point, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, let's move on. Another guy that I think uh, needs to get a a tremendous singles push, uh, cousin Jake, also known as Jake something on the indie scene. 
absolutely tremendous talent. Tremendous talent. They can make him into a monster. If Again, go to the Indies. Uh, look uh, look at some of the matches that he has had. You know, Jake something. He's had uh, tremendous matches against um, so many people. He's had tremendous matches against uh, Hakeem Zayn and Rohit Raju. Uh, they've had some... some killer matches against each other. I would love to see them to have a feud in, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, but Jake something is, is just... It, words can't describe just, just how amazingly talented uh, he is and he how he can be. I know he lost two matches in a row uh, to uh, to Joseph Ryan, Joey Ryan. Okay, They're trying to build up cancer culture. That makes sense. But... He needs a push. He like he could be an absolute monster, an absolute monster. He could definitely. I'm thinking he could definitely. Like say Michael Elgin becomes the Impact um, World Champion. Cousin Jake, Jake something, and I wouldn't mind him going back to Jake something. You know the name that he's using on because uh, he's not really Cody Deaner's cousin. He's Jake something. You know if you go to the indie scene, he's not cousin. Uh, he's not cousin Jake. He's not Jake Deaner. He's Jake something on the indie scene. Uh, so they're they're not the 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 cousin. Um, the, the cousin bit is only uh, for Impact Wrestling, uh, but I could see him definitely. Definitely working his way up and challenging. You know, Mike say Michael Uggen is a champion. Them to go at it one on one. Oh my God, that would be such a tremendous, tremendous match. So Rohit Raju, Jake something, two guys that they absolutely, in my opinion, need to push. Another one, last person I'm going to talk about that they, that they need to push. Uh, I'm going to talk about it briefly. Kiara Hogan. Kiara Hogan needs to be made into a absolute bonafide legitimate legitimate contender for the knockouts the impact knockouts title and i know she did her um she did her segment where um it was a few weeks ago i believe she said that she's ready to go out on her own and and um you're gonna say i can't remember what it was word for word but you know, along the lines that she's ready to strike out on her own and and uh, show everybody what she's what she's made out of and uh again i don't remember it word for word i'm just thinking it off the top of my head uh, and then last week they have her in a um in another uh, in a segment with uh, Tasha Steeles and saying, "Hey Tasha, I want to take you under my wing and let's form a team." And Tasha's like, "Yeah, okay, fine. Well, we could. I think she said we could smack bitches together, something like that. <laughs> something like that." Uh, but but now there, there goes Kira Hogan. I thought Kira Hogan was going to go solo. Or she's going to you know have this nice solo run, but now she's. Um, in a team now with Natasha Steeles. And what's going to happen now is it's going to lead to um, Kara Hogan maybe not happy with Tasha, Tasha Steeles and uh, eventually attack Tasha Steeles. And then we're going to have the one on one match, uh, the little feud between the two, which Tasha Steeles will probably uh, um, wind up uh, victorious in. Uh, but but Kara Hogan, and another incredible talent uh, in Impact Wrestling. And uh, they should definitely... I, I don't think they should have gone this route with her with Tasha Steeles. I think they should have just left Kara Hogan on her own because that's where I thought they were going with with that initial promo um, a few weeks ago or that, that little segment that they filmed. But, uh, you know, they, they she should have went on her own. Like I said, went on her own. You know, have her win a string of matches and then become a legitimate... Um, legitimate contender for the uh for jordan grace and the impact wrestling knockouts title but that doesn't look like it's gonna happen now and and i say rohit and i'm going back i i mentioned rohit was jake something and kara hogan now i really hope that impact wrestling sees what they have here and they do give them the singles pushes that i feel they deserve because let's go back to the let's go back to remembering when there was a guy named Trevor Lee in Impact Wrestling. Uh, tremendous talent, who I absolutely loved, and they really could have made him into a, a superstar of Impact Wrestling, but they didn't. They, they kind of made him into almost like a, uh, a, a comedy show, a comedy act. And uh, which was uh, which was a mistake. Yes, he held the X Division title a few times, but um, was primarily didn't they didn't use him to the best of his abilities. Let's just say. And what happened? He left, and he's now in NXT. I think he's going by Cameron Grimes right now. I believe his name is. But I don't want to see that happening to Rohit Rajuk Jake something or uh, Kara Hogan. 
I don't want them to see them misusing them and then they move on to NXT where they um, potentially becomes, could become stars. Uh, so, anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Um, I just want to point out Kimberly and uh, Nevaeh. Uh, I'm not sure if they're signed or not. I know uh, I went on to the Impact Wrestling website and uh, looked at the knockouts, and Kimberly and Nevaeh are not. Are not um, they don't have uh, a picture profile on there, but Tasha Steeles does. So I'm wondering if Kimber- Kimberly and uh, Nevaeh are going to sign with Impact Wrestling or if they were just brought in for this set of tapings because they were short wrestlers. Uh, so, I don't know. I'm hoping they get signed, but I guess it's not official until they make the official announcement, and they haven't made it. So I'm wondering if they're going to um, to sign uh, these two wrestlers. I would love to see them. They're both very talented. I would both love to see them in Impact Wrestling. And uh, speaking of knockouts, uh, Diona Perazzo says something very, 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 very interesting. Very interesting two days ago. Uh, she's being interviewed, um, and she's talking about Impact Wrestling, and she says, I think with Impact, they've signed so many women over the past two or three weeks. Kimberly just debuted. Tasha Steele has just debuted. They have Nevaeh and Jordan Grace as their champion. It's a lot of people I've worked with on the indies before, before the WWE, so I would be excited to meet back up with them again now. And that's coming from Deanna Prazo. She also says, uh, not only does Impact have the Knockouts division, but they also have a Knockout who is currently the the world champion in Tessa Blanchard. And she says she thinks it's really eye-opening to the rest of the wrestling world. Impact has always, since the beginning of TNA, been so open-minded with the way they treat their women's division. To do such a historic decision only breaks down those barriers more. Women continue to can only continue to grow from here on out. And this is Deanna Prazo saying this about Impact Wrestling. Uh, she mentioned earlier, she mentions earlier in the interview that that AEW is also interested in her, or she's also interested in going to AEW, but she didn't have the praise for AEW that she had here for Impact Wrestling, which leads me to believe that Deanna Perrazzo is leaning towards Impact Wrestling. I get, I don't want to say I expect her to sign with Impact Wrestling. It seems very likely that she's going to sign with Impact Wrestling, which can only be a plus for Impact Wrestling and the Knockouts Division. Make the official announcement, then officially announce Kimberly and Avea, and they have the best women's division, bar none, in professional wrestling. Well, that's it for me today. I am your host, Lewis Carlin. Thank you for joining me today on Shooting Up North, as heard here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.